Really, the key to making decisions is not so much about what to do, but about who am I. And our confusion about what to do comes with a confusion of who we are. Once we really are connected to a sense of who we are, then knowing what to do comes much more easily. And also once we realize that the purpose of our life is not in the roles we're playing. The purpose in our life has to do with what I awaken to what I experience, how much I'm able to live as love, as consciousness, as awareness, as soul, as spirit. And the truth is you can pretty much do that in almost every, in almost every city, in almost every career choice. But because we have gotten brainwashed into believing that the purpose of our life has to do with the role we play. So the purpose of my life, if I'm a mother, becomes to take care of my children. The purpose of my life, if I'm a teacher, becomes to teach. The purpose of my life, if I'm a doctor, is to treat. The purpose of my life, if I'm a gardener, is to tend to the plants. The purpose of my life, if I'm a cook, is to cook. But no, those are just the roles we play. And they have nothing to do with the purpose of our life. But we get so caught up in thinking that I've got to figure out the purpose of my life. And is it the cook, or is it the lawyer, or is it the doctor, or is it the teacher, or, or is it the mother, or is it the mother and the doctor, or the mother, you know, I could do the mother, I could do the doctor, I could do the cook, I, why not? I can do all three of them. And then the purpose of my life becomes just to stay sane. Because I'm trying to simultaneously be a mother and a doctor and a cook at the same time and a gardener. But I've, I've wrapped my sense of awareness of who I am so much in what I do that no wonder it's confusing. And no wonder it, it, it rips our heart out, the concept of maybe making the wrong decision becomes about my entire life. And the truth is the only wrong decision you can make is to not awaken, to not look within, to not shift focus from the outer world to the inner world, to not live from the heart. And when we say from the heart, of course, I don't mean your impulses and your desires and your you know, instincts, but really from love. That's the purpose of our life. And the reason that you know that is any career at most, you've got it for a few decades. At most, even if you're one of those people who goes through school knowing exactly what they want to do. Get the job in their 20s. Well, all right, so at most, you do this for what, 30, 40 years? It's barely half your life. We've got all this life prior to our career, all this life post-retirement. Well, if, if who I am, if the purpose of my life is that career, well, what about the other half of my life? What about the hours I'm not at my job? And so it's a very, very tricky and sticky way to try to think about your purpose. But that's what gives the sense of desperation to decisions. Because it's not just about this city or that city or this job or that job. It's about my life and purpose. And the minute that you can actually recognize 
the purpose of my life is to know who I am. Not in the role, not who I am as doctor or cook or mother or lawyer or gardener, but who I am as soul, who I am as spirit, who I am as essence, who I am as love, who I am as divine being. And you can do that as a doctor, you can do it as a gardener, you can do it as a mom, you can do it as a cook, you can do it as anything. But those are all just roles that we play. And the truth is, yeah, some of us are going to be better at certain ones than others. Just like in a school play, you know, the, the one who can sing gets the singing role, the one who can dance gets the dancey role, the one who had a growth spurt a little bit early gets to play the villain because he's, you know, head and shoulders taller than anybody else. But they're just, they're just roles based on aspects of what we have. But we all understand, well, he's not really the villain. And she's not really that, and he's not really that. It's just she gets to play that role because she can sing. He gets to play that role because he can dance. He gets to play that role because he's really handsome. You know, I mean, in a, in a play I remember that we did when I was... God, probably kindergarten, maybe maybe early elementary school. I was probably six or seven. My hair used to be even much more curly than it is now. And I was given, given the role of Medusa <laughs> in, in a play that we did who has, you know, hair that's, that's, that's out of hair of, made of snakes. And... And in order to play the role, I had to bend my head over. And the, the head of the drama department or whoever was doing this play with us in kindergarten or first grade brushed out all my hair from the bottom so that when I flipped my head up, it literally went straight out like three feet in, in every direction. And the point is, it wasn't that I was any more like this character or that character, but whoever was planning it looked at me and said, this girl has got the hair to be Medusa. And you couldn't say, ah, well, that's, that's the purpose of my life. It had nothing to do with purpose of life. It has to do with, the, you know, the type of hair I had. And this is where when we think about careers and jobs, and I'm not, I'm not trying to make light of it, Anything that you're going to do for that many decades is something that certainly deserves thought and attention and care. But it's not the decision of the purpose of your life. And as long as we're able to keep those separate, as long as we're able to understand, well, these are decisions that I'm making about roles that I want to play. Do I want to play that role or play this role? It's a drama and we get to decide. Do you want to be the villain? Do you want to be the singer? Do you want to be the dancer? Do you want to be Medusa? We get to choose. But none of it has anything to do with our purpose. The purpose is waking up. And the purpose is living deeply as who we are. And so the more and more you can connect to that, the more the life decisions are going to come much more easily. Because when you know who you are, you know what to do. You know, I always say that the, the dogs never jump off the balcony after the birds because the bird flew and the dog thinks, well, the bird did it, I can also do it. Somehow, intuitively, the dog understands I'm not a bird. No matter how many birds it watches fly, it, it never jumps off the rooftop. Nothing in nature messes up who it is. Dogs eat dog food, cats eat cat food, monkeys eat monkey food. They, they don't, you know, you never, you never see a bird going moo. Got confused, thought it was a cow for a little while. It was around too many cows. It sort of picked up cow-like tendencies. It never happens. Because they know what they are. And our deepest problem is we don't know who we are. And so we start identifying based on these roles we play, which in most cases weren't 
decided by us. They were given to us at the age when I was Medusa. I mean, can you imagine if I had grown up believing I really was Medusa? Like how my life would have been so different. But most of the roles that we get given, the smart one, the stupid one, the pretty one, the ugly one, the good one, the bad one, you know, these are, these are roles that we get given in families, in school, in society. And then we live according to them. But it would be as ridiculous as me living my life, oh, who are you, Medusa? I just had the hair, and the teacher, you know, gave me the part. I had these very big, long fingernails that I remember falling off me in the middle of the play. But it has nothing to do with who you are. So let that be your focus, rather than the focus being on making decisions. Focus on who you are. And then what to do will come very, very easily and very naturally. And when it doesn't, you'll make a decision and either way will be right. The wisdom, this is the last point, the wisdom very frequently comes not so much in the decision itself, but in how we live with the decisions that have been made. Because many times wisdom comes after we've made the decision. We don't, we don't get to have all the experiences before we choose. In many cases, we have to make a choice. You know, it's like you walk into an ice cream parlor for the very first time. 31 flavors, but you have no idea what strawberry tastes like. You have no idea what vanilla is like. You have no idea what chocolate's like. Well, you've got to make a choice. And in life, we have to make decisions very frequently without having tasted all the options, without knowing what they're all like. And so you just, you do your best, you make a decision, but the wisdom in many cases comes afterwards. Well, all right, so now this is the decision that has been made. How can I utilize this decision, utilize this path I'm now on to awaken, to grow, to get more in touch with myself? So that's the place that, that wisdom for many of us comes in. How can I make this the right decision? Whether it was or not when I was making it is irrelevant. How can I make the decision I made into the right decision? 